Welcome back to your family altar this Wednesday. We're strengthening our hope around our family altar. So we've been walking through 1 Peter 1, so Monday uh, we were reminded of how our hope is strengthened by the fact that we're God's elect. Tuesday, yesterday, we were reminded that our hope is strengthened uh, by the fact that we have this grace and peace. And now Peter continues to strengthen our hope as we look at verses now 3 and 5, 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he gave us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. Through faith, you are being protected by God's power for the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the end of time. Now, what I have found always interesting about this section of Scripture is the word blessed right away at the beginning. Peter starts with a word of praise. Now, that, that's kind of contrary to how you and I often think when, when the trial comes into our life. Um, isn't it true that sometimes we, we have the thoughts of why? Um, or we're complaining a little bit about the problem? Or we're whining a little bit about the problem? But Peter says, no, we're doing just the opposite. We go to God and we begin to praise God. We, can, we call him blessed. The word blessed means that, that we're saying good things about him. And, and sometimes people want to raise their fist to God and complain to God about troubles. And, and Peter's saying, no, we look up to God and we praise him. We bless him. We say good things because we are looking beyond the temporary moment of pain or struggle to the amazing gifts, the many blessings that God gives to us. And, and Peter starts off with this amazing blessing when he says, by his great mercy, he gave us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have this new birth. We are, we're born of God. You all know your birthday. It seems to be an important day in our lives. But on our, our birthday, we were born into sin. We were born destined to die. But there's our second birth, our baptism where we're born into the family of God and we're born to live. We're born, we're born to live eternally with God forever. When we face the, the sorrows and the struggles and the trials of life, again, we hear Satan whispering into our ears, oh, life is ruined, everything is ruined, it's all shot. Everything's falling apart. It's not ruined. Our life is not falling apart. We have life eternal with Jesus. We have this new, this birth into this living hope. And we've been talking about hope, but we haven't necessarily defined it yet this week. And, and, and hope is this confident expectation, a confident expectation that God will keep his promise. The word hope in our language is is used, unfortunately, in a very subjective and, and, and unlikely way. Brothers and sisters, I'm hoping that on Easter Sunday morning we're able to gather together for worship. I'm hoping that might be the first time we get together again, but I, I don't know. Because there's no promise. But I do hope for all of us to be in heaven. And I know that's the case. It will. Why? Because we have the promise. Because I live, you also will live. That's what Jesus said. And everything is based upon the resurrection. Notice he says here, it all comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The empty tomb is the foundation of everything in our lives. It, I've said it every Easter Sunday, the resurrection changes everything. It changes how we look at life. Because we know that since Jesus died and rose again, he will keep each promise and he is with us. And he will love, never leave us, nor will he forsake us. We have heaven that cannot be taken from us. And notice how Paul describes, or Peter rather describes this. He says it's undying, it's undefiled, it's unfading. With these words, Peter is describing our inheritance in a way that, that can never be taken away. And, oh, by the way, did you see what he says to us when he uses the word inheritance? Again, he's taking us back to our identity. Heaven is not a reward for conduct. And good thing it's not because we won't get it. 
Heaven is an inheritance, meaning it comes to you through a relationship. As a baptized child of God, you have heaven. And because of that, you have a living hope in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so now it's time again for you as a family to gather around your family altar and to spend time strengthening your hope on these many good and gracious promises in verses 1 to 3. I wish you the Lord's blessings as you study this together as a family at your family altar. But let us now pray. Heavenly Father, turn us back to you as we deal with this new trial in our lives. Help us to turn off the TV and turn on your word in our lives so that we are comforted by the love of Jesus on the cross for our sins. Draw us to the cross and to the resurrection of Jesus for our strength. Where there is panic, fill us with the peace of forgiveness and grace. Where there is fear, fill us with your amazing love. Where there is loneliness and anxiety, comfort us with your presence. Where there is despair, fill us with the hope from your word of promise. Help us to keep our eyes on Jesus and his love. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.